In the first lesson of this chapter, we gave an overview of the importance of materials in the, in the history of human civilization. We talked about how different materials are used to produce tools, including weapons, tools for agriculture, tools for cooking, how materials are used for construction, construction of shelter, construction of, of roads, and how materials are used for clothing. So we've talked about the importance of materials and how biomaterials have some very useful properties, but that humans have also tried to improve upon these properties by either making composite materials or synthetic materials. And in this lesson we'll begin talking about composite materials, but before that we want to talk about some properties because if we're going to improve, we have to have some context for what we're trying to improve. And all along, we will try to point out that the basis for these properties have to do with the bonding of the molecule at an atomic level and or the organization of the material at a microscopic level. This first slide gives an overview of the type of properties that we use to describe materials. We can describe materials in terms of their mechanical properties, their physical properties, or their chemical properties. With respect to mechanical properties, we're talking about their strength. In the next slide, we'll talk about compression strength and tension strength. Or we can talk about their malleability, their elasticity, their hardness, their the tendency to retain their shape. The physical properties could be their density, how heavy they are per their volume, their thermal conductivity, the ability to conduct heat, electrical conductivity, ability to conduct electricity, whether or not they have any magnetic properties, and optical or acoustical properties. That is, do they transmit light? Do they transmit sound? Chemical properties can include flammability, whether or not a substance will burn, resistance to water, whether or not it will dissolve away or somehow react with water, uh, resistance to corrosion, corrosion by either acids or possibly corrosion by gases, including oxygen, and temperature sensitivity, whether or not something easily melts. The plot on the right shows the strength of various classes of material plotted against their, their density, just to give you some idea of the mechanical properties and how they can be compared for one class of matter with another. And what you have in this graph is the strength plotted on the y-axis and density plotted on the x-axis. And if you look at the green area, for example, that would be wood. And wood is fairly strong for its density, but there are types of matter that are stronger, certain polymers, certain composites, ceramics. And the light blue area is for metals, which are stronger, but they are more dense. And so there is this relationship between strength and density. Looking a little bit more at what we mean by strength, strength can be measured in one of at least three ways. One is compression. That is, imagine taking a sample of some matter and trying to squeeze down or, or compress it. That is, compression strength is strength to withstand crushing. This is very important if matter is going to be used to support weight. Tensile strength, or tension strength is a measure of the ability to withstand pulling apart. So you can imagine taking a sample and then pulling on, on both ends to see if you can stretch or even to the point of breaking a sample of material. So that is tensile strength. Shear strength is the ability to, to withstand side, side to side shearing or cutting. So you, you can just remember that like scissors, shears, cutting side to side. Now a point is that strength will depend upon molecular architecture. Going back to examples of carbon, you may remember that there are two, well there are at least two, there are actually more than two, but there are two forms of carbon that we talked about. One is diamond and the other is graphite. Now, of course, graphite is the more common. Diamond is a very hard substance. It has high compression strength, it has high tensile strength, and high shear strength. And it's because the atoms of carbon are all bonded together forming four bonds to other carbon atoms. It, just imagine if, if you had four arms and you were in a room and you held 
arms with four other people. That, that sounds weird, doesn't it? But it just imagine so that you're holding hands with four other people. Now you can imagine how strong that network could be. No one could move if everyone continued to hold hands. Well, that is the molecular architecture of carbon, and that's what makes it so hard. Uh, the problem, of course, is that it's so rare and therefore very expensive. So we use diamonds as, as jewels. Rather than using diamonds to build buildings, graphite, another form of carbon, has a different molecular architecture. In graphite, the carbon atoms are bonded in a sheet, in a series of sheets that, are, that lie on top of one another, and these sheets can slide past each other. Because of that, carbon, while it has a fairly high compressive strength and moderate tensile strength, has a very weak shear strength, that it's very easy to cut carbon. And of course, if you have a lead pencil, as we have said earlier, that is actually carbon, and you're rubbing off layers of, of carbon because these, these layers so easily slide past one another. Okay, so that is an explanation of what we mean by strength of matter and how it relates to molecular architecture. I want to now talk about a few composite materials. Composites are a blend or a mixture of two or more substances for the purpose of improving physical properties of that material. Now, some composites you're very familiar with. Plywood. Plywood involves layers of wood glued together, and plywood is a relatively strong material that is used for construction. Reinforced concrete. If you've watched construction areas, you know that, that they will usually insert steel rods, such as shown in the right, steel rods before they pour the concrete in order to improve the tensile and shear strength of the concrete, and therefore of the building. Safety glass is another composite material which involves two or more layers of glass, some type of glue or film or polymer in between the layers. Tires are composites, layers of rubber and steel belting. Concrete and asphalt cement, or what we call blacktop, are composites of cement or asphalt, asphalt being that tarry substance that is a component of petroleum, very, very thick, heavy component mixed with some filler material and fabric composites. In fact, very likely you're wearing a fabric composite now, usually a blend of cotton and wool or cotton and polyester or other synthetic polymers. And we, and we do this to improve the physical properties of the fabrics. That is, we take advantage of cotton's breathability with the wrinkle resistance of a number of the polymers. The last example I want to show you of composite materials is a relatively new type of composite material called metal matrix composites, or MMCs. These are made by dispersing. This is, in some sense, like the reinforced concrete example. But in this case, it is some type of fiber. And that fiber can be a chemical substance, including carbon nanotubes, that are inserted into the matrix of a metal to strengthen that metal, to improve the, the tensile strength and the shear strength of metals. Examples are carbide drill bits, which involves cobalt, the metal cobalt, as the matrix containing some tungsten carbide particles. Tank armor is steel reinforced by carbon nitride or these carbon nanotubes to make the material much harder than it would otherwise be. And another example are bicycle frames, which is aluminum containing these long fibers of boron carbide. So metal matrix composites are a relatively new type of composite material designed to improve the hardness of the material while at the same time being a very lightweight material. Okay, we're again going to take a break. You'll be asked a few questions and we'll come back for lesson number three.